Uh, we'll start with a brief overview of the Cloud Lightning system. Uh, the, cloud li the modern computing, cloud computing infrastructures are gradually equipped with specialized and different types of hardware, such as accelerators, data flow engines, or dedicated clusters, high performance clusters. Uh, the Cloud Lighting project aims in the design of a system that can manage these heterogeneous resources through self-organization and self-management. Thus, local decisions based on user input and uh, the needs and the user needs are performed from the system, ensuring optimal execution and decreased power consumption from the system. Some facts and challenges are that the cloud environments allow for expansion of the underlying resources without substantial changes in the software. However, over-provisioning of resources was chosen as a method for, for assuring service availability, leading to underutilization of these resources and extensive power consumptions, consumption. <coughs> Lever moreover, leveraging performance based on homogeneity, in example, adding identical general purpose cores to today's CPUs, poses problems such as a limitation on power density, heat removal, and of course, cost. Moreover, currently, the current delivery models, such as infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, etc., are not designed for handling HPC applications. There are more general purpose types of delivery. <coughs> Integration of these different types of hardware, this new hardware that, uh, that's offered uh, and, manage and management of this type of hardware is, increasing, is increasingly more complex, especially in cloud environments, since this type of hardware, accelerators, for example, have different APIs, different software stacks from classic general purpose um, hardware. And this process is at a very early stage. These problems can be handled using the Cloud Lightning perspective, for example, Following Alan Turing's observation that global order comes from local interactions, we can manage and organize this, uh, this pool of resources locally without unnecessary overhead present in hierarchical control. So by minimizing the number of messages uh, transmitted between the components of such a, a complex environment, uh, we hope that uh, the, the overall performance of the system will greatly increase. The use and management, also from the Cloud Lightning perspective, we are trying to use this modern high-performance dedicated hardware, which has low watt to, to flops ratio, in order to decrease power consumption of such systems. Thus, moving from the classical CPU-based computing to accelerator-based computing. Moreover, the Cloud Lighting aims to limit the overprovisioning by adaptively picking optimal sets of resources to carry out different types of applications. This, uh, this could be done through, specialized, through a specialized template-based system where applications can be deployed on, on the fly by its particular user. Also, the Cloud Lightning tries to introduce a new delivery model, namely HPC resource or CL resource, as Professor Morrison mentioned, as a service. Now, some introductory terms about the architecture. The life cycle of the Cloud Lightning service begins by the enterprise application developer. The EAD submits a blueprint to the gateway service, or registers, actually, the blueprint to the gateway service. The blueprint is a graph representing the workflow of a service and particular <coughs> uh, in order to automate a particular task or business process. The gateway service is the front end of the Cloud Lightning system, providing a unified access interface for both users and uh, EADs. The gateway receives the, res the resource options capable to service its blueprint and enables the EAD to select and deploy this blueprint onto the system. The gateway service contacts the cell, which is a part of the Cloud Lightning system, which contains the self-organizing self system that will actually match 
the needs of the user or the EAD to the available resources. And it should be mentioned that typically the Cloud Lightning system will be composed of multiple cells. A uh, graph of the architecture is given in this slide. As mentioned before, the cell is the top entity residing below the gateway service. Each cell is composed by multiple VRACs. The VRACs can be grouped into VRAC groups that are managed by the VRAC group manager. This, it, should be it should be mentioned that the VRAC group is composed of VRACs of the same architecture type, for example, CPUs or another VRAC manager could be could um, include uh, could include CPUs in conjunction with GPUs. The use cases chosen by the system are th chosen to evaluate the Cloud Lightning system are genomics, oil and gas exploration, and ray tracing. Moreover, general sparse and dense matrix comp computations should be also investigated since they are involved in large-scale simulations in most of the large-scale simulations today, such as in fields such as computational fluid dynamics, computational mechanics, structural analysis, and these types of, of applications. The three use cases require large-scale computational infrastructures, minding today's needs, which are costly to build on site or operate on site. Cloud services actually are, is an effective way to decrease the cost of, of deploying these applications. These applications are also suitable for use with modern accelerator type hardware, which has reduced, as I said before, reduced uh, watt to flops ratio. In example, in genomics, the local sequence alignment part of the application can be performed efficiently in data flow engines. The oil and gas exploration, and more specifically, the real-time migration, as well as open porous medium framework-based simulations can be effectively accelerated in GPUs. And for the ray tracing application, there is a variety of uh, ray tracing engines that, will implement, that can implement this either on uh, Intel MICs or the, N or the NVIDIA GPU cards. In order to, to simulate such a complex environment, the resource characterization is, uh, is, uh, it has to be performed. The resource, the resource characterization involves the definition of parameters that describe the execution of applications with respect to underlying hardware. But the process of characterization becomes significantly more complex, especially in the case of heterogeneous hardware that includes CPUs, GPUs with different programming models, different architectures. So in order to limit this na the number of parameters required to, act to, um, to simulate such uh, equipment. We have to obtain accurate metrics and a way to do that is to choose some specific applications that resemble the type of computational work required for each of these use cases. And exa some examples for the genomics or the ray tracing are, for example, we can use uh, the MAMR and the MAMR GPU package for CPUs and GPUs respectively or the speed waterman implementation for DFEs. For the ray tracing application, for CPUs and mix, we can use the Embry package, and for GPUs, the NVIDIA optics. Using these applications, we can acquire metrics such as performance, power consumption, and derive from them dimensionless indexes of performance. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna, we are gonna use baseline a system as a baseline, for example, the CPUs as a baseline, the performance of a CPU, the perf and, use, and use it as a denominator to the ratio given here, and use the performance of, a, of, the, of, a, the performance of, of an application to the main integrated core architecture, derive the ratio, which is, will be always greater than unity, and provide, and uh, this gives us a performance index, a dimensionless performance index that can be used to assess the differential improvement by using modern types of accelerator hardware. Moreover, these indexes simplify computation of 
accurate metrics because we don't need to, uh, to have lists of parameters such as cash hits, cash misses, and uh, spec uh, uh, hardware specific metrics. Moreover, because they are dimensionless numbers, they can be easily induced with more characteristics such as power consumption or scalability. Moreover, they can be combined uh, together, more of these uh, indexes, in order to characterize parts of the system or the system as a whole with respect to an application. Moreover, using these differential metrics, we can easily simulate tasks because we know with, it, with these metrics, we know how much faster is something rela relative to something else. So if we use a CPU as a baseline, which will always have a performance index uh, that will be, because it's a baseline, equal to one, we can easily use, easily um, evaluate the improvement of using a GPU or a MIC or a DFE in the simulation. An example of such a performance index for the oil and gas exploration is given here for three different types of hardware. We can use multiple tests because, for example, the oil and gas exploration involves, it's different from the other applications, it's not computationally monolithic. It actually involves uh, multiple dense and sparse matrix computations realized as dense and sparse matrix multiplications or solutions of large and dense sparse linear systems. Thus, we don't have to perform multiple oil and gas simulations, but instead find a minimum set of applications that actually describe the computational work performed by, such, by, the, by this application. Moreover, by characterizing the system through its, cap its capability to perform general sparse and dense matrix computations, we also can uh, have metrics and insight on other types of applications that are based on the same principles, such as computational fluid dynamics, computational astrophysics, or even computational fi finance. For simulating cloud environments, there are two major categories of, uh, let's say, two major categories of software. The discrete event-based simulators <laughs> that are not, that avoid building and processing small simulation objects like packets in the cloud environment. However, they lack accuracy. And the packet level simulators, which simulate every little component in a cloud environment, they are more accurate, but they, they require substantially more computational effort. There is no holy grail for, sim for cloud simulation. There are various simula simulation environments that have been proposed. Some of them are the cloud analyst, the cloud shed, the cloud sim, the green cloud. Uh, this table shows the capabilities of these environments. It is easy to see that no one of them covers all the, all the spectrum of characteristics. So, how this fits to the Cloud Lightning system? The Cloud Lightning system is more complex than the classic cloud environments. Since it uh, involves components and services that are not present in today's cloud infrastructures. These are the coalition formation mechanism, for example, VRACs, VRAC managers. There are complex network communications. And by complex, I mean with complex pattern, not volume. Thus, the classic simulation tools cannot be used to simulate such an environment. Moreover, the different strategies that might be implemented for coalition formation, either static or dynamic, imp impact the system and affect the complexity of the simulation because these local interactions are somehow chaotic. You, the overall system has no picture of these simulations, doesn't know what's happening. All the, these VRACs and, uh, are self-organizing and propose a solution to the system. And by the solution, I mean they propose a set of resources capable of carrying out an application. Thus, the system has no particular global view of what is happening in the lowest level. 
Moreover, since the system is quite complex and many, many parameters are involved, the simulator must be inherently parallel. This is not offered by today's simulation, simulators. And it has to be inherently parallel since to cope with this complexity or the, the different interactions that need to be modeled, um, in order to, to fit this and carry out uh, a large-scale simulation, we need, ext we need parallel resources. The CL system also targets three distinct use cases that can be modeled by the, the aforementioned dimensionless indexes. By modeling these, uh, these applications, we can have accurate metrics. We can derive accurate metrics from the simulation. For example, a task can be simulated, a task in the cloud lightning sense, can be simulated using a structure with four members. The number of computational units required, the required hardware, CPU, GPU, DFE, mix, the application type, what type of application we are going to run, and the time units required for this application to run. Each task occupies W hardware instances of computational capability X for an application Y for a Z time unit. The required hardware defines what types of hardware are required for the application to run. We also have to define a time scale. Generally, we can perform the simulation time unit after time unit, advancing with, um, with our, uh, for we can choose the, the step in which we advance the simulation in time. For simplicity, let us consider that one time unit is one second. Similarly, a coalition of hardware, of capable hardware to execute a task, can be um, defined by the following structure. The number of computational units that this coalition has, the compute capability of this coalition, and by compute capability, we can have, for example, uh, a dimensionless index that says that this, this coalition is 2.5 times more um, has 22.5 times greater performance for an application compared to a standard CPU, a standard baseline CPU. The interconnection speed and the storage interconnec interconnection, the power consumption of this coalition in terms of, uh, again, a dimensionless index, the cost to use this type of hardware, and the time required to initialize this in time units. Consumption and cost, as I said, are dimensionless numbers. Interconnection and storage interconnection are measured in, gigab in gigabits per second. And the server initialization is measured in time units, and in our case, in seconds. Thus, the time for an execution of, uh, of a task is not only the time that, is, that this task requires by the system, but it also uh, includes the time that we need to initialize the hardware in case this hardware is in slip state. Also, the time required for this system to acquire images and data, denoted by the alpha here, and the time that the system requires to be, in order to be again in the idle state. The beta parameter is actually the time required to free these resources. Thus. The total time that is needed by an application is not just the execution time, but it has some additive latency of the internal that's induced by the internal applications in the Cloud Lightning environment. For the network, we can use a linear model, since we are talking about a high-performance cloud. And the linear model is actually fit for us because uh, the, the delay is dominated by the size of the data uh, that are transferred between the different resources during the execution of an application. Finally, in order to simulate such a complex environment, we need uh, a unique, uh, un we need a custom simulation framework. 
Actually, we need a hybrid simulator that's between the discrete event simulator and the packet simulator because we have large scale events and small scale events that actually matter in a cloud lightning environment. Moreover, the simulator must be able to cope with static and dynamic coalition choices in order to assess the performance or assess the, uh, the time to deliver a service. Moreover, auto scaling should be also introduced for the use cases. This is something that also has to be modeled some way in the, the simulator. And the dimensional acidics is helping that to do that more easily. Finally, the, the simulator will be based on this, will be a parallel application actually that will simulate both the, the application as well as the system because the system will be evaluated with the three aforementioned applications. Thank you. <laughs>